And also Tripura happens to share a very strategic border with Bangladesh. And this border, you know, has sprouted several uh, unrest, uh, in the incidents of unrest in Tripura. Uh, so the issue of illegal immigration has also become a major political issue with uh, the CANRC debate uh, reigniting time and again whenever there's an election around the corner. Uh, so as far as that issue is concerned, how do you uh, place that in order with the recent violence uh, that has occurred, uh, that has allegedly occurred in uh, Tripura? Um, Sharon, um, I don't think there's really a direct connection, honestly. I feel that the alleged violence in, uh, this is my opinion, of course, in Tripura was actually just a construct before the elections. This was uh, uh, some amount of, uh, dirty politics that was being played there was an attempt to create divisions and uh, uh, divisions amongst uh, people of a generally peaceful society uh, tripura has been known to have insurgent issues but that has been uh, that has been mitigated to quite uh, an extent you know i remember traveling to tripura over a decade ago and uh, there used to be many insurgent outfits like NLFT and, uh, you know, there used to be uh, a lot of turbulent violence struggles by different outlawed uh, outfits. Uh, uh, TNB was one, United Bengali Liberation Front was one, um, National uh, Liberation Front of Tripura, NLFT was one, All Tripura Tiger Force was one. You know, all of this has, uh, uh, you know, all of this has been brought uh, to some conclusion, more or less. Uh, so Tripura is really not uh, in the position that it used to be 10 years ago. It's in a far better position. It And these insurgent groups, mind you, were not just because of, bit, uh, of uh, illegal immigration, but there were a lot of vested interests. For ex instance, uh, ISI was uh, functioning at a high level in, from Bangladesh. A lot of uh, insurgent groups were being supported by um, uh, uh, they were being supported by these uh, uh, organizations from these geographical locations. And because the borders were porous, it was very difficult to sort of uh, uh, manage the situation at that time. But uh, uh, the CANRC, I don't think, had much to do with, uh, you know, this alleged violence or had anything to do with this entire construct that had been made. Uh, if you noticed, uh, uh, I've actually written an article about it that uh, from the 23rd and 24th of October, uh, we started seeing a huge amount of uh, material, propaganda material crop up on the internet. And this was all about how uh, Tripura uh, was under attack, the minority community in Tripura was being targeted, how mosques had been demolished. Surprisingly, and I'm sure you won't be surprised because you probably have heard of this, that um, um, all these websites were from Maharashtra. They right. were not from Tripura, you know, and a lot of these, uh, this propaganda material, a lot of uh, uh, the, the rallies that were organized were organized in Maharashtra. Right. You know, the violence happened in Maharashtra. Raza Academy was uh, very much uh, uh, involved in organizing these rallies. And we know the antecedents of Raza Academy. We know how um, uh, how motivated they are and from what direction they have been motivated and where they are leading to they these kind of pressure tactics are not tactics that have not been used before they've been used time and again by the raza academy they have been able to mobilize people they've been able to mobilize rallies and sitting in the mumbai office they have been able to multiple times um give out fatwas you know, so we have to look at whatever and considering that the head of uh, uh, the head of uh, the majority of the mosques in uh, uh, Tripura um, were, uh, 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 you know, which is uh, the head of jamaat e ulema Hind, uh, I think uh, the gentleman's name is Maulana Mukti Rahman, he himself said that uh, there has been no mosque that has been destroyed. Our home minister made that uh, comment uh, and said that, uh, you know, things are under control. There is no violence, no mosques have been destroyed. The DG of Tripura police also said the same thing. How is it that these groups and these vested interests on the other side of the country 
um, took out a rally, uh, did a band, uh, enforced a curfew on people who didn't want to follow the curfew, which eventually turned into violence. Did they miss out all this information? So at the end of the day, we have to look at, uh, I feel, all this uh, violence that happens, which is based on a communal agenda, we have to see it in a larger context. And I think that's what happened with the Zibura case. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanavad. Namaskar.